Hi and welcome. This is DCS Digital Combat Simulator and I'm using the Toby Eye Tracker 5. Now I did make a video on the Toby Eye Tracker 5 and I had a question that came up repeatedly and that is can it work in 6 degrees of freedom? So can it do 6 degrees of freedom? So can you do up, down, left and right with the head? Can you do physically forward, physically back, physically left, physically right with your body? And can you rotate your head left 90 degrees and right 90 degrees? Now that's head and eye tracking. So I'm just going to demonstrate the head tracking first. So we're going to look at the left wing with our head. And then we're going to go back to center. And then we're going to look at our right wing with our head. And then back to center. And then we are going to look up with our head and then back to center and then we're going to look down with our head and we can look at the left panel we can look at the right panel and then we can go back to center very easily done now with the toby eye tracker 5 you don't have to have anything on your head so no head tracking device you just sit down in front of your computer monitor and that's it there's no tracking device required on top of your head and it does eye tracking. So we're going to do the same thing this time without moving my head. We're going to keep my head fixed. I'm just going to look forwards at the monitor and I'm going to look around. So it's going to do some eye tracking now. I'm just going to move my eyes. So let's look at the left wing. Let's look at the right wing. Let's look up. And I can look around up there. And then I can go back to center. And I can look down. I can look at the left panel. And I can look at the right panel and I can go all the way back and I can go back to center. Now you can of course use your mouse wheel with this so you could look at the left panel, zoom in so you can read something and then zoom out. Now we want to demonstrate can you do the physical movement. So can you move physically left. So let's go physically left. Now of course if I had the canopy open I'd be able to lean out the window and look it forward. And we'll go back to center. It will go now right, leaning right and then we'll go back to center. Now we want to know if we can go forwards. So I won't use the mouse wheel here. I'm just physically moving forwards towards my monitor. Watch what happens. I can now look there at my gun sight and I can look over the top a little bit if I need to. If there's a plane down there out of sight, go back to my gun sight, check what's going on. Go back to my gun sight. That's physically going up and then also going forwards. So that's that. So we'll just demonstrate that to you again. That's physically up. That's forwards. And then let's do backwards. So if we lean all the way back in our chair, all the way back in our chair, that's all the way back in our chair. Seems pretty realistic to me. Okay, great. So that's forwards, backwards, left and right. But can it do rotate? So can you rotate your head 90 degrees to the left? Well, I'm going to rotate my head physically 90 degrees to the left. Let's try that. 90 degrees to the left and then back to center. And now I'm going to do 90 degrees to the right. And then back to center. So you can do 6 degrees of freedom with the Toby Eye Tracker 5. I highly recommend this little device. It's awesome. Works really well. To get it working, you need the Toby Experience and you also need the Toby a Game Hub app. You go into the Game Hub app and you tell the Game Hub under DCS, the game, where the DCS.exe file is. Then you load up DCS the first time and nothing will work. You go into a module, nothing will work. The first time it usually doesn't work. Exit out of DCS, then load DCS up a second time. On the second load, it will work. If you are having difficulty, I suggest removing any files that you've got in your C drive under saved games for DCS just temporarily move it to another location and also just try the clean install of DCS if you do those two things then also make sure you go into the game hub select the DCS.exe file in there and then load the game exit out of the game and load it up the second time you should find it will work if you do have difficulty the Toby forums are excellent to try and get information, but you will have to obviously contact them. If I 
have any questions that I think I can answer in the comments and you are having difficulty, I will certainly try. But if I haven't answered, um, I obviously haven't got an answer that's good for you. So definitely I would seek information elsewhere. But I want to just demonstrate it is working in DCS Digital Combat Simulator. Now, you can only get head tracking working in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's not very good and I don't recommend it for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. And I know a lot of the audience on my channel are interested in Microsoft Flight Simulator. At the moment, it needs native support into Microsoft Flight Simulator for it to work well. So hopefully Microsoft and Asobo will put Toby iTracker 5 support eventually into Microsoft Flight Simulator but as it stands at the moment you can get the head track part working I don't know how to get the eye tracking part working in Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's not very good so it's so not good that I wouldn't even bother but in DCS Digital Combat Simulator in IL-2 Stomovic in Watch Dogs Legion in Assassin's Creed Valhalla in the Division 2, a whole bunch of Ubisoft games. There's a huge amount of support for the Toby Eye Tracker 5 and a whole bunch of Ubisoft games. Um, it is working. So I did show it working with an F-18C last time, so I just wanted to show this plane. At the end of this video, I'll try to also just show a little bit of footage of it working in an F-14 Tomcat, either the A or B model. But what I want to do next is just show you a little bit of combat. So if we can just have a look at our map, I've got a bit of activity down here. Hopefully I can fly over there and take out one of the anti-aircraft at the airfield over there. And then maybe we can get involved in some dogfight with some of these planes just to demonstrate some of that to you. So our plane's going along. Now one thing you might find difficult, sometimes here, especially in this plane, you can't see all the information in the ammo counter here. So let's show you what I can do. I can now physically move my head and look at that. I can look underneath there. I can look on the right. I can look underneath there. I can look there. And it's so, so simple. Now say I want to look around the joystick. Well, there you go. I can look down the joystick. If I want to click something, I can click it. And I can go back to center. So say I want to go down to here and I don't want to hold my head in that position. I can just pause it, click whatever I need, I can move my head now wherever I want, and then eyes wherever I want as well, unpause it, go back to here, and we can keep flying. Okay, now we've got our airfield over there, cool. Let's go roll over a little bit and get ourselves ready. We've got to release our cover, safety cap. Try and make ourselves a little bit more harder to shoot down. Probably won't work, but we'll give it a go. Now, of course, you can put your mouse wheel zoom on your mouse or your throttle or your joystick as you see fit, whatever is easy for you. So I'm coming in on this one here. I'm going to lean over. To I've got the labels on. I would not normally be playing with labels on. But hopefully that helps, at least for video purposes, to give you an idea that I'm attacking an anti-air unit down there. Okay, so we'll open our fire. And we'll pull up. Now this is not a demonstration on how to do a ground attack. I'm really just trying to show the Toby Eye Tracker 5 here. I'm sure there are better ways to do um, a ground attack than what I just did. But of course we can look down behind us and we can see the airfield and it's burning. Other units are going in there for an attack as well. Now I'd like to get involved in some kind of skirmish with one of these planes. These guys are just flying away from me. I've got a couple of P-51s that are seemingly eager to get involved. So let's see if we can get involved with them. Got another year old destroyed so we damaged something. That's great. So here's a couple of P-51s there. I would like to get a little bit further away from this airfield if I can. We'll see if we can get involved in a bit of a dogfight. We'll slowly climb up. There's quite a bit of activity over there. 
There's a whole bunch of Spitfires and stuff. We might be able to head over there. Let's do that. Just bring that throttle back a little bit. So I can look down here. I can close the cover. We can go back to the center. I think some of you wanted to see how you could actually use it in a mission. Like, is this functional? Because it's... Um, Hard to imagine if you're just on the ground. I think I did take off in the last video. I haven't taken off in this video, but we have at least damaged a ground target and hopefully we'll be able to take out one of these aircraft up here in a few moments. So what have we got ahead? We've got a couple of Spitfires further and they're the ones we're gonna be going after. So we'll head over towards them. Again, you can look down here, look at that. I can look on the left hand side of the joystick, you can see, I can look on the right hand side of the joystick, I can go down here, look whatever I want, anytime I can pause it and then I can click whatever I need and then go back and go down here, I can click on that, I don't even need to pause it to click it to be honest, it's too easy, I can open that, click whatever I need and then go back. You've got your oxygen down here, um, let's point our nose back up. So you can look over the nose if we've got a combat situation. I'm hoping we can demonstrate that in just a moment. So 4.1 nautical miles away, we've got a Spitfire. And we've got one friendly. So we've got three Spitfires and one friendly there. So I think we can get involved in that one. The two Spitfires up above are quite high. We'll see what we can do about them. And one Spitfire is around about our altitude here. He's climbing. Don't think he likes what he sees. So you can sort of look up here like that. Like how cool is that? You can look down here, looking up. Um, so, so easy to do. Looking around, looking around. We've got some activity over there. Here's the Spitfire. We're starting to get up to the same altitude as them now. Trying to climb. Just keeping an eye on him up there. There he is. There he is. So I can just keep watching him. A couple of friendlies down there. And he's up there. Okay. There's a parachute. So you can sort of look over the wing. Keep an eye on the parachute. Go back to centre. Here is our Spitfire friend up there. Slowly gaining altitude here. We should be able to start to engage them soon. Uh, this one's diving. So we're going to go straight onto this guy. You can see how I'm using the tow bar checker. I think he's ejected. The other guy's chasing him. We're going to watch him jump out now. Should see a crash, there's this crash. We can pull back out. And we've got another blue one up there. So can you use this in a combat situation? I think you can. Here's another one, he's going down. I could add some bullets, but I don't think it's necessary. I think he's um, going to be gone. He's crashed. Someone has begun to hit me, so we need to fix that. You can see we've got some wing damage. Let's have a little look at my screen. We've got one behind me, obviously. He's quite actively on me, and I'm gone. So we'll look at ejecting, if I um, look at the wing, so again we can see our wings destroyed pretty badly. I've got one, one gears down, our wings destroyed. I'm not sure how I'm going to land at the moment. But we might still be able to keep fighting. So there's our Spitfire friend over there. Let's give it a go. The engine's still working. 
There's our Spitfire friend. Let's give this a go. He looks like he's going in to me. He's super low. So if we have a look at our screen, they were all shut down. And we're still flying. So there we go. I might go off to their 14 Tomcat now. And we'll show you a little bit of that. Are there any of them still flying? More Spitfires. Okay. Let's stick around. Our plane is super badly damaged here, but we'll just we'll have a go at a front on assault on one of them. I believe my gun's still working. So they're just coming straight at us. They're climbing. There's one on the right wing there. He's got straight onto behind me. Here we go. Seems like my gun is damaged. Let's just test my gun. The gun's not working. Okay, gun is working. Taking a tremendous amount of damage here. We've managed to jump out. Let's go over to our Tomcat. Hi, and welcome back. We're now in the F 14 Tomcat. And I'm still using the Toby Eye Tracker 5. So I'm going to show you how I can do a cold and dark start in the Tomcat with the Toby Eye Tracker 5. I'm also using a piece of software called Voice Attack to bring up the menus in the top right. So I'll show you how we can get the electrics and the air connected without me touching the keyboard using Voice Attack. So I'll show you what I do. I'll say the word Master. Master. You'll notice the menu is up in the top right. Now I want to go to ground crew, which is F8. So to do that, I'm gonna say 1-8. And then we wanna connect the ground electric and the ground air. So I'll stop looking up there because obviously I don't need to know what the commands are in my head. Um, so what I'm going to now do is 1-2, 1-2, 1-1. And now we'll do the next one. Master. 1-8. And then we want to do 1-5. 1-5. And then 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. So now we've got the ground air supply connected. We've got a couple of planes going past over there. A buddy next door to us is starting up as well. But I haven't had to touch the keyboard at all yet. All I'm doing is talking as well as recording my voice. And um, 
I've been able to get that much done. So now we can go down to here. We can get started on our cold and dark start. We're going to look down here on the left. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn one, two, and three on. I'm going to click, click those two. And I'm going to go back down here. I'm going to do the right engine. Um, then we can take the parking brake off a little bit later. Up here we've got the radar ultimate. I'm just going to spin that around, put it at 100. I'm going to get rid of this standby sign. Just right click on this. Hold down the right mouse button and then it will disappear and then over here I can release this so that's now gone now Jester wants me to arm the ejection seat which is way back here so we'll keep looking until we can see the ejection seat button and it's up there We've got way back further than we need, so we'll just go back again. And there we go. So that's how you can hit that switch. Um, obviously this joystick you can look to the right of, you can look to the left of. Normally you can't look down here, but with this I can look over here. And then I can zoom down here and I can look at that. And then I can go back to center. I can look over here, look down there, and then go back to center. So that's pretty cool. Uh, right engine is started. Now if you're finding this to hard to see, you can just physically go down here and look at it. You can go down here and look at that. Uh, you can look at our speedo. So I can even come down here and then look at that like so. Not hard to see now. A lot of people comment that it's hard to see the speedo. Well, with the Toby Eye Tracker 5 you can do that and then look at it. So not very hard to do. Um, we want to do the other engine, so I'm going to click on this here for the left engine and then there's a little switch back here for the oxygen, we're going to left click that once. You know so I can see the onward, normally it would be hard to see the onward to be blocked but because I can move around I can now see that onward, so that makes it easy for me. Down here we're just going to turn it on to manual and we're going to change it to main. Um, all this is fine, but we'll just put it on transmit receive. I'm not trying to do anything too serious here. So this is not like a guide on how to start the plane. But I'm just showing you that it's going to be possible to start a plane. Obviously, you could click on these when you need it if you had them. But we've got none on the plane, so we don't need to. What we will do is we'll click these three. So we'll switch on these screens. If you don't know, you can make this red. So if you left click here, you can make it red. And you can also pull this out, which will change the color of that. So if you go and pull this filter out here, it'll make that red, which is not good. But it's good at night time. But at the moment, we're not seeing very much. So engines all started. We can take our handbrake off. The throttle is all the way back, so the plane will not go anywhere. We can now have a look over on the right panel. Now, if you wanted to, you could just get yourself to this point. Hang on. You could just get yourself to this point and then pause the screen. So now I can just pause the screen and I can just click around what I need. So I can just go that, that. I can stand upside down at the moment and the screen will not move. I can put it on dim, dim. We do need this here on both engines. So I'll just change the temperature to two. We're going to have to hit the reset button in a second. So I'll just put this on to bright and bright. Now if you want this to flash, you need to make sure anti-collision is off. If you put anti-collision on and then expect it to flash, it will not work. So just something to keep in mind. You also have to hit your master switch to get all these lights working on the outside. Um, just hitting this alone will not do it. But we'll just do that anyway for the moment. Um, don't need this, it's not important for us at the moment. We're not doing a carrier landing. So we're just going to release the screen. We're going to go down to here where it says master reset. Left click at once. Um, we're also going to move this forward, lock it in, close that, and then hit the master reset once more again. You'll notice there's nothing down here with the warnings. Jess is very busy behind us. Um, what you can do is you can change this here to TID, and then you'll see here it'll show you how much time is left for your INS to align. But I haven't told Jester anything particularly to do yet, so. We'll look at go fine, we'll click that, and now he will start that process. This number will go up, and this bar here will go all the way across to here. And when it reaches there, it's finished, and he'll say ready to taxi. So that's that. Uh, radio up here is for all us, and then that's our rear seat radio. 
Uh, we've got our fuel gauge down here. So if we wanted to look at that fuel gauge and give ourselves a bit of a better look, obviously I can get down here. I can get down here and look at it. I don't know how much closer you need it to be than that. But that's what the Toby Eye Tracker can let you do. And obviously I can move hard right. I can suddenly move way back over here to the left if I needed to. Um, all that's good. Um, if you are having trouble, you can always reset it. So, say it's in the weed position, you can just go and reset it. So, bang, and you're back in the center again. So that's one thing you can do. And if this joystick is just simply in the way, it doesn't matter how much looking around it you do, you can just push the delete button on your keyboard and you can get rid of that joystick. So there you go. Uh, handbrake is off, our engines are started. We're trying to do the INS align, but I don't really care too much about that for this video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly taxi away. We're gonna hit N on the keyboard. So we're looking up here and we should see nose wheel steering. So I'm gonna push N on the keyboard. Obviously I'm looking down at my keyboard when I'm doing that. But because I'm in real life looking down, I wouldn't be noticing that it's looked down so much. Um, as I look up again, it suddenly returns me back to what I was looking at. So for me, it's very natural just to go off screen and then back to the computer screen. But for you watching a video, it seems a little weird. But I just want to point that out. So we're gonna move the plane along. We can turn the labels off if we like. We can push W on the keyboard for brakes. At least I hope we can. Slow to go forward. Let's try my brakes. Seem to be working. So our wings are out. We can bring our flaps down. So F on the keyboard. There we go. Now when I'm doing the external view, I'm just using the mouse. So it's only in the internal view, but I'm needing to do the head tracking anyway. You can look at our speedo down there. And then back up to center. Look at our speedo down there. And back up to center. So yeah, pretty good. Back to the left, back to the right, and back to center. And just keep rolling along. Yeah, I really like the Toby Eye Tracker 5. The main advantage is you can just sit in front of your computer as you do normally. Don't really have to prepare anything. Just load up the game, sit in front of the computer monitor, and you've got head tracking and eye tracking. Track IR5 simply doesn't have eye tracking. And I actually, for the most of the time, when I'm looking around, I'm not moving my head. I'm just simply moving my eyes. All this is just my eyes. Like, I'm not moving my head around. I want to look over the left wing. Well, you know, I can do that. Okay, let's level this up. And look at the right wing. Well, I can do that. So we're going to give ourselves up to mill power, which is around about here, 10. And we're not going to go past that for this takeoff. Just straighten it up. We'll take off our nose wheel steering with N on the keyboard. And then we're going to power ourselves up. So just go down to right about 10. Try and keep ourselves straight. We've got some friends going past over there. But that's pretty cool how I can just look over my left wing and watch him take off. Come back to here. No problem at all. Didn't have to move the mouse. I can push F12 on the keyboard. We've got our speedo there. We're way fast enough. So we're going to take off like a rocket. I push G on the keyboard and let's shift and F on the keyboard to bring the flaps in. We can do a bit of an interesting takeoff. So we'll come around, we'll just bring that throttle back. And we'll see if we can land the plane. Oh gosh. And there you go, we landed. So that's how you can use the Toby Eye Tracker 5. Hi and welcome. So now we're in the P47D Thunderbolt and we're going to try and do a cold and dark start without moving my head. 
So I'm just going to use my eyes this cold and dark start and I'll show you if we can do it. I am going to use the keyboard and the mouse because obviously I need to click on stuff. But besides that, I'm just looking around with my eyes. So let's get started. I'm going to go down to here. Now keep in mind this is not the correct way to start it. The main purpose here is to show you the Toby Eye Tracker 5. It is not to show you how to cold and dark start it. But I'll show you what I'm doing anyway. We'll right click and right click to main on. Down here, gen on, right click. And then up here I'm going to spin this all the way around to the right. Up here we've got a red arrow for the mixture. I'm going to move that all the way forward to full rich. And up here we've got a cover. Left click and then left click again. That will get our guns ready. We can bring the throttle back now. We've got magnetos here. Right click, right click, right click to both. Left click once on the battery and then over to the other side. Over here we're going to right click and then left click. One, two, three and four. That's fine. And then we can right click it again to lock it. Down here is the tail wheel lock. And if we can zoom out a little bit and look back here, we can close our canopy. Great. So now we've done all that, we can look at the little switch down here. So I'm going to put it onto energize with the left mouse button. We'll hold it for about eight seconds and then we're going to start up and this propeller is going to start moving. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and along lazy eight then we are going to right click and then move the throttle just gently forward and it should start catching you can see the propellers moving up there and this will start going around and we know the plane started great so that's the plane started you can throttle back and there's my throttles back here you can put the flaps out if you want to you could just just yellow leave me here so you could go down a little bit or a lot we don't want it going a lot, so what we're going to do is just put it maybe ever so it's touched slightly down. There we go. Not, not enough. Is that better? That's better. That's perfect. So we'll leave it like that. And then we'll jump into our external view. Give the plane a little bit of power. Now we've got the tail wheel locked, so I'm using Alt and W on the keyboard to spin it around. Alt and W. It's left Alt and W, in fact, if that helps. Left Alt and W. And then to go left, we will use the left Control and W. So you can see I can move it around. Keep the speed slow. So nothing gets out of control. You can taxi around with the tail wheel unlocked, especially if you need to make a large turn. But I'm not finding that's necessary at the moment. Now, I don't have butter pedals connected, so... I'm kind of forced to use this with the keyboard at the moment. It is much easier with the rudder pedals. I could connect them, I just don't have them connected at the moment. So just tapping the W just to slow ourselves down a little bit. And then we'll take that last turn to the left. Got a couple of guys further down the runway that are going to be waiting for us, but that's okay. There we go, pretty good. And there's plenty of runway in front of us to get started there. Okay, so we'll just let it stay warming up. We'll just hold down W on the keyboard for a little while. Next step is we're gonna go down to here, manifold pressure, and we're gonna make sure this bar here is in the green zone. It must be in the green zone. Don't go past that, because if it goes down here, you will start blowing the motor at the red mark. And then the next thing we're gonna do is look at our speedo. When the speedo gets to about 110, we can pull back and we can take off. And that's pretty much the two things that are going to happen. We use the rudder pedals to keep ourselves straight. Now, I said I hadn't used uh, Leave My Head to do the cold and dark start. I haven't, but if we look here, now I can look around the joystick. And I can look over here and I can look around the joystick. So, that's just moving my head slightly. And that can help if you're trying to look around a little bit. Awesome. So we'll just let this plane keep running up for a little bit longer. You shouldn't let it run out for a lot longer than what I'm about to. The boost is un unlocked at this stage, which is fine. We can see all our temperature gauges up here. You can see at the moment, I'm just looking around with my eyes. 
So it's very natural for me. This is pretty much what it would be like in real life. Up here we've got our landing warning lights. So if the green light is on, that means the gear is down. If the red light is on, it means it's in transition. Either it's going up or going down. And if no lights are on, that means the gear is in. So the gear is in, the gear is not down. So if you've got no lights, the gear is in. You do not have a gear down, you need to get a gear down ready for landing if that's what you're doing. Um, but we're going to be taking off right now. So I'm going to release that W. We can see ourselves moving. Then I'm going to start speeding ourselves up. So we're going to put this into the green zone. There we go, we're in the green zone. Don't have to do too much more. Now we're just watching this. We can watch the plane go past for a few seconds. Go back to the inside. I'm going to watch that speedo. Here we go, we're about 100. Just pushing very gently on the thing, we're at 110. I'm just gonna pull back now on the joystick and slightly to the right. And if you had your trim set, you can help yourself a lot by adjusting your trim right now. So then you can look over the wings and you can look down there. Got a couple of other planes taking off, I believe. further down the runway, so if we can catch them, I will try. Really need the um, trim. And there's our friends, so if we look out the window. Actually, if I can open this, then we should be able to lean out and you can look down there. It gives you an idea what that's like. So we've got our canopy open at the moment. Speed is pretty crazy. Pretty certain I won't be able to land this, but we can try. Not without um, knowing what my trim settings are. So I'll push G on the keyboard for the gear. Gear's down already, that's okay. Uh, flaps. Flaps are now down. Let's see how we go here. Coming down towards a hundred. And I've just felt it back to nothing. I'm just letting it run along. Let's see if our plane's still functional. Well, we're on the ground. Would need to do it a lot softer than that. But then I can begin to tap the W button on the keyboard. And we'll just try and turn left a little bit with the tow wheel brake locked. And there we go, we're on the ground. Awesome. So that's the Toby Eye Tracker 5 with the P47D Thunderbolt. A take off and a landing. And I didn't use rudder pedals then at all. I've just the keyboard. So there you go. launch. Temperature is 86 degrees, altimeter is 3002. Time for all necessary personnel to the flight deck and the cabin. All the small flight deck personnel can be the top of the flight deck to the floor. Helps on a couple of dots and downs, leave them down. Hold those securely back to check yourself for loose gear and pod. Check, 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 all the gear about the deck. Check all motor clearance and prop. All the go aircraft. Anyway, check 
your uh, tack in is set to 74 X-ray. Uh, don't forget to reset your master caution when the wings are swept. Also, let me know if you want me to set the data link to the Stennis or not. Once airborne, we'll fly our DME-7, then join the pattern above the ship. Okay. They are recovering a couple flights ahead of us. It might be a while till we get to Charlie, so make sure you can serve fuel. Ideally, we want to make all three traps without refueling. After the first trap, we'll go straight for the pattern. Means just like in the bolter. Leave the gears and flaps down, climb 600, and go straight for the downwind. Once we've hit DME-7, I'll let you handle the comms. We're usually zip-lip, as always, but CAG wants to evaluate radio comms for both pilots and NFOs. So you'll have the honors today. Trap 1 will be with radio comms by the pilot, since the CAG evaluated us yesterday. Trap 2 and 3 will be zip-lip, not even LSO. So just watch the traffic, fly the pattern, fly the ball. We'll simulate MCON. I'm ready to taxi when you are. Let's line up on CAT 2 and get going. There's another crew waiting to switch hot after us. pattern at 2,000 feet. When ready, contact CAC CC. Remember, CAG wants to hear clear and good pilot comms. Looks like there's dirt at 7 o'clock.
Yep, that's dirt at 11 o'clock. open the canopy there.
Hey man, dirt at 10 o'clock. some points there. One down, two more to go. I think fuel-wise we're okay. Let's line up on Cat 1 and go for the second round. Remember, after the launch, we'll proceed like during a bolter, straight for the downwind and groove. Make sure to check if someone's in the brake or about to brake. If so, wait with the launch and then simply get behind them in the pattern. Ready when you are.